Hi everyone, welcome back to the processes within the project management body of knowledge. This one in particular is an overview of project quality management. So how are we managing the quality and making sure that our deliverables are what our customer wanted in the first place? As you can see, we're making our way through, first we create our scope, what we're delivering, then when we're delivering it with the schedule, and then how much it's going to cost, so all of those things. But now we need to manage that quality and create the quality management plan so that we can make sure that those deliverables are what we intended and make sure the customer gets what they want. The processes in project quality management are planning quality management, so the process that we're going through, you know, the, the framework as we've seen many times before. Then we're actually managing quality itself, so going through that quality management process. And then we're controlling the quality, making sure that it doesn't go off track, uh, make sure it stays on track, and what happens if we need to make changes to keep things on track or prevent things from going off track in the future. Now there are plenty of inputs, tools and techniques and outputs overall for project quality management. And of course, we've got the project management plan for all of them, which is our favorite. That'll be an input into almost every process. We've got the project charter itself. We've got enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets as well. Expert judgment makes a, a big appearance but a lot of data gathering and data analysis. So we're gathering that data on how the quality is going, how our testing might be going or inspection might be going. And all of that needs to feed into how we're managing the quality and then controlling the quality as well. Then ultimately, we've got our quality management plan, quality metrics, project documents updates and project management plan updates, of course, any change requests, if we do find defects when we're testing, uh, then we may need to make a change request to, to bring those back into line. Major project quality uh, management interrelations. So this is where things uh, can get confusing for some people. So this is a really nice overview. We're planning quality management. So this is uh, obviously where we're actually planning the process itself. But managing the, the quality is when we're testing. So we're actually going through that process of testing and we'll have quality reports as an output of that. Now that will feed into controlling the quality. So we need to make sure that the quality uh, or the deliverables are exactly what the customer wanted to their specifications. And once all of that is done, then we go back into the project scope management process group and we have our customer validate that scope. So they say, yes, it is exactly what we wanted, or no, it's not what we wanted, and then we might need to go through a change request process or a change control process if we need to change it based on that. So that's where they all fit in the grand scheme of things. Key concepts for project quality management. So it applies to all projects, but the quality approach to software deliverables will be different than building a, you know, a building or a nuclear power plant, for example. So there are examples of failing to meet quality requirements and they're never good. You know, really we, want, we do want to be ma matching that quality uh, requirement that we came up with at the beginning. So you, you might have overworking the project team to get things done. It might increase overall levels of project risks at the same time or people might leave employee attrition. You might have more errors or more rework. So there's a definitely a careful balance that you need to make as a project manager. You, you may want to work people quite hard or to get things done. You might have a deadline or a schedule milestone, but you have to be careful to manage that and make sure that everyone is still okay uh, to be working and still you know, not making errors and hopefully not leaving the project as well. Meeting project schedule objectives by rushing planned quality inspections might result in undetected errors. So don't skimp on the quality management process. In other words, make sure you are testing properly. Uh, at the very least, do a risk-based approach, test those high risk items, and try and go through and make sure that the entire, item, the entire deliverable is fit for purpose. That's going to give you the best outcome from the customer's point of view. Key concepts you'll see are quality and grade. And we've gone through these in the key concepts as well. But quality is the degree to, in, to which a set of inherent characteristics full, fulfill requirements. So if it's high quality, 
then it meets the requirements that we wanted. Um, so, uh, but grade uh, applies to the number of features or benefits of the product itself. So I like to think of this as, you know, as a grade from school. So an A plus grade would be a lot of features. They've got features, features, features. Think about your iPhone, for example. It, I would give that an A plus and it has a lot of features. Um, or, you know, think of an item that you use regularly and that you love that has a lot of features. That's a high grade. You'd give it a high grade. But uh, making sure that those features do what you want them to do, that's where we look at quality. So if only one of those features did what we want it to do and the other ones didn't do what we wanted it to do, it would be of a low quality. So that's, uh, that's the difference between those two items. Key concepts as well, prevention. We want to prevent defects rather than find defects. So prevention is preferred over inspection always. It's better to design quality into the deliverables rather than find quality issues later on. The cost of preventing is also less, usually, than the cost of correcting mistakes once they've been found. Now in Lean or Six Sigma, this is also called error-proofing or poke-yoke in uh, Japanese. And I hope I've pronounced that correctly, but that's, how, <laughs> that's where we've come from, from a Lean Six Sigma point of view and building in that quality, error-proofing the process or the uh, deliverable that you're working on. Cost of quality is also something that you'll come across. And that's, that includes all costs incurred over the life of the product by investment in preventing non-conformance to requirements. So uh, what's the cost of preventing errors or finding errors or, or, or fixing errors? So we're, we're usually either preventing them or we're finding them or we're fixing them. So preventing is often the, the least cost uh, if we're finding them and, uh, you know, then that's, then that's or by inspection, then that's usually a, a bit of a higher cost. But if we're having, and if we're having to fix them once they've been found by a customer, that's, you know, lots and lots and lots of cost. Usually, usually the highest cost, including brand damage and all of those things as well. Uh, also, statistical control, for example, Six Sigma includes prevention, uh, attribute sampling. So if we've got 100 items, can we sample five of those items and get a really good idea of, of how that's tracking? Uh, so that's attribute sampling um, and tolerances. So maybe we've got control limits. Uh, maybe uh, something we'll be tracking along here, but if it goes out of control, uh, out of within the control limits, then we really need to do something to bring it back on track. As we've seen, the most expensive approach is to let the customer find those defects. Um, detecting and correcting the defects before the deliverables are sent to the customer uh, is often the, is a good part of the quality control process, it's ideal. And using quality assurance to examine the correct process itself and not just special defects. So are we actually creating these items in the right way to prevent defects in the future? Incorporating quality into the planning and designing of the project and product is a, is a key theme that you will see and creating a culture throughout the organization that's aware and committed to quality. So we're not just uh, taking a rushed or a slapdash approach. We're really wanting to build in that quality at every step uh, within the process and within the deliverable. Trends and emerging practices, you'll see uh, customer satisfaction. So customer experience, CX is, is becoming more prominent. The business analyst role focuses on customer requirements. All of this focuses on the customer continuous improvement, so making those small incremental improvements over time. Management responsibility, so you know, is the manager is responsible for this quality, not just the people themselves, and a mutually beneficial partnership with suppliers. So how can we have a win-win agreements uh, where our suppliers are getting a win and we're getting a win as well for all of the outcomes that we're delivering? Tailoring considerations that we'll come across are policy compliance and auditing. So yes, there may be existing policies and procedures in the organization, and that might include auditing your process uh, for your project as well. Standards and regulatory compliance, definitely becoming a big uh, item. More and more prominent is more regulation around the world. Continuous improvement, how are we improving the processes within our project? And stakeholder engagement, is there a collaborative environment for stakeholders and suppliers to give their feedback so that we can pick up those defects 
are people afraid to to call out mistakes or is it a free you know is it a more free environment for people to make mistakes so that we can fix them quickly considerations for an agile or adaptive environment as well you will see retrospectives where at the end of an iteration say let's say it's two weeks and we've delivered a feature that someone can see feel and touch and our customer you know it says yes that's great but then we go through a retrospective where we say with our team what went well what didn't go well uh, what have i learned and what still puzzles me uh, and that way we can improve our own process over time based on our answers to those questions as a team. And small, regular and frequent delivery where we're delivering those features usually on a, on a shorter time scale, but multiple features, not just in one big bang. And that way we're getting a good idea of how our project is tracking and whether it meets our customers' needs at each of those feature milestones, not just at the end if we're delivering in one big bang. And that is the overview for project quality management as part of the project management body of